When you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror, do you go, gosh, I wish I looked like I did when I was younger? Well, you maybe just want to freshen up a little bit. Our next guest may be able to help. He's Dr. Michael Schwartz, and he's here from the Body Sculpting Center to talk about a new facial plastic surgery and some trends that have kind of changed in the last couple of years. Good morning to you. Good morning, Stephanie. Um, it seems like the faces now uh, look a little different when we're trying to rejuvenate our skin and our, and our, our look. That's true. Whereas in the past, we were tending to stretch and tighten people uh, maybe repeatedly. Now we've realized that a lot of the aging process is gravity taking effect and, and loss of elasticity and loss of fullness in the face. So really our goal is to restore fullness and a natural unoperated look to the face, not a stretched or overdone look. What do you think has uh, contributed to the kind of the, the change in that trend of, of fullness as opposed to like kind of pulling it back? I think maybe we've just become more sophisticated in analyzing what the aging process involves mm -hmm. and uh, really determining that we're losing a lot of the soft tissue under the skin and whereas again we used to think or, or surgeons in the past thought that you could repeatedly tighten things over a thinning skeleton it's now obvious that that's not the answer people tend to look uh, gaunt and more aged not less aged if you don't restore fullness and reposition say the cheek pad up onto the cheekbone or under the eye or if you were to remove fat from the lower lid which is a popular procedure but it can make your eyes look hollow and really more aged than if you actually restore fullness to the lower lid. Let's talk about the restoration and how you're able to, what tools do you use for that? Well, we try to use the patient's own or, or a person's own tissues, that's ideal. Um, the cheek pad, for example, falls, you form a, tr a trough or a hollow under the eye, mm -hmm. so it's great to take that cheek pad and suspend it back up to the rim of the orbit, the bony rim of the orbit underneath. And at the same time, that supports the lower lid because a lot of the aging process involves loosening of the lower lid. It becomes sometimes incompetent. And uh, you can see uh, often that the uh, lower lid will lower after eyelid surgery, whereas we try to support it more in order to give the eye a more natural appearance. Likewise with fillers, uh, the woman that we just saw had relatively thin lips. We like to plump up the lips, but again, we don't want people to look like a duck. We want them to look <laughs> natural. Right. Um, so the idea of that is to plump up the border of the lip, maybe less the red lip than the border of the white and red lip. I want to bring up the pictures, too, that we can't, uh, uh, showing this area, where we're kind of like by, by your nose a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, you can see, it's, what I love about what you're doing here is everything's subtle. This is a before picture, and we're, we're directing our attention right next to the nose. We can all relate to that. Yes. And, you know, people focus on these lines. It's partly due to the laxity of the cheek tissues coming down and falling against that relatively stuck area of the upper lip. Um, but actually, if you, if you fill out the area right next to the nose, that little triangle, it helps as much or more as filling out the line itself. This woman had some filler that lasts a year to a year and a half. It's a great, easy procedure that you can do. This is immediately after, so you have a little redness. But you can go back to work or whatever you're doing that day. I'm impressed, too, when you look at the, 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 the f before picture that we're looking at right here uh, of this, a gal that's clearly a little bit older than these other examples that we've just mm -hmm. seen. Um, you know, her, her changes really dramatically, I mm -hmm. think, uh, improve her the look. She's a great example of this because she had uh, just subtle changes, but they all contributed to a really aged, tired look. And mm -hmm. so I did a lot with her. We lifted her brows. We trimmed her upper and lower eyelid skin. But, but the most remarkable thing about her is the subtlety of her cheeks, I think. She, instead of having puffy lower lids with a little trough beneath them, she now has more of a uniform cheek complex where her cheek is restored to a look that maybe uh, she had 20 years before. Also, the jawline is improved by just repositioning those tissues that are falling over the jawline, creating jowls and excess skin in the neck. I gotta be honest, you change her color, the color of her hair, and she would, she would even look even younger, I think. That's true, that's true. Because of the, the dramatic changes to her face. Um, finally, can you just tell me about uh, the approach between men and women, and if you, if you do approach it? That's important. You know, a lot of surgeons look at, uh, you know, if you, with a, a guy with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. We, you take out as much as you can in a man or a woman, but really there are, are important differences. Uh, it's important not to, say, overdo a man's eyelids. If you take out too much skin, it feminizes a man's eyelids. 
So uh, that's important to take less in men and also in terms of hiding the incision for facelifts. We do a lot of male facelifts mm -hmm. and the, the incision can be hidden in front of the ear as opposed to behind the ear or behind this front part of the ear which we do in women. You can't do that with men because it brings the beard up onto that part of the ear and you have to shave and it's not very convenient. No, so, I can't imagine it would be. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but if you place it carefully in front of the ear and hide it with meticulous closure, it really works out great and it's not detectable. Finally, you have a, uh, something that you wanted to offer the people watching today that are perhaps interested in getting something done. We do. Done. We're offering a free syringe of filler if people, uh, for the first 50 people that call in after today to book surgery. So we'll throw in some filler, which is uh, great value and Absolutely. can be used in almost anyone over 20. Perfect. Appreciate Great. the time that you spent Thank with you, me. Thank uh, Body Sculpting Center is uh, in Scottsdale. It's on 2255 North Scottsdale Road. Their phone number to give them a call is 480-464-8000. You can get more information as well at bodynew.com. And finally, we want to let you know that Body Sculpting Center is a sponsor of Sonoran Living Live.